Hi there, this is Abhishek and in this video I will walk you through about the process of hypothesis testing. Uh, we will see about what's and why's of hypothesis testing about why we do the hypothesis testing and uh, we will look at very high level about how you do it and uh, what are the procedures for doing it. So first of all, why hypothesis testing? So hypothesis testing is because you want to validate your understanding by data or you want to validate your assumptions or your learning with the help of your data and validate it whether it is right or wrong. So what can be your understanding or assumptions? Well, a lot. Maybe like you can say that you are average in sports and uh, by collecting some sample data, you want to validate whether you are better in sport or you are below average. Another example can be a 200 gram packet contains exactly 200 gram but not two less or more. Well, in that case, you can validate it by collecting some sample from your manufacturing process and validate these from the samples whether they contain uh, exactly 200 grams or more than 200 grams or less than 200 grams. Third example can be in a general life, which is reading four hours a day will give you good marks. Well, what does that mean? That exactly if you are reading four hours, will it give you a grade A? And what if you're reading more than four hours, let's say doubling it eight hours, will it give you A plus? Or maybe it's something like you were going to get a less marks. Well, you can validate it by collecting data of your some historical result, historical results of our previous students and get the get your understanding validated. So all of your understanding oh. is getting denoted by the null hypothesis. So null hypothesis has an indication H naught. That's how we call it. So apart from null hypothesis, there is alternative hypothesis, which is a statement which is completely opposite to this or different than this. So we'll see in next slide alternative hypothesis, which is H1. And what we basically say, let's say in the first example that we looked at earlier was that you are average in sports. But once you did the testing and you figured it out that your null hypothesis or your assumption was not correct, but alternative hypothesis is correct, which is saying that you are better in sports. A second example that we looked earlier was a packet that contains exactly 200 gram, but with the help of the sample that we collected and uh, the average that we got, we figured it out that packet contains less than 200 gram. Well, third is that you collected the data of your past to students about how many number of hours they, they did these studies and the, the number of marks they got or the grade they got. So you figured it out that reading more than four hours will give you good marks or a grade. So all of this uh, is basically uh, logically concluded with the backing of data and the proven statistical steps. So two things to keep in mind is uh, first is this null hypothesis which is your assumption. Second is your alternative hypothesis to prove that your assumption is not valid and uh, you are bound to choose the alternative hypothesis. So let's go and dive a little bit more deeper into uh, null and alternative hypothesis by looking at the type 1 error and type 2 error. So what does they basically say? Here is the situation. This particular columns basically or this particular section is saying the actual situation and this is basically telling our decision based on our testing. So our actual situation is saying that null hypothesis H0 is true and Alternative is basically we are saying H0 is false. So we are not rejecting, don't reject H0, don't reject null hypothesis or don't reject your assumption when your assumption is or null hypothesis is true, then you are saying that you are making a correct decision. But if you are not rejecting the null hypothesis H0 when it is actually false, then you are making a type. Two error. For example, the one of the, exa the example that we earlier saw was the 
reading four hours in a day. So we said that uh, reading for more than four hours in a day is basically give you going to give you good marks and with the help of data we figured it out that it is true however when you collected another sample and you figured it out that people who have studied even more than 10 hours did not get good marks because they got overstressed by the studying and it actually resulted into uh, the less marks so with the help of just one sample you have not rejected the null hypothesis however in actual situation that was false if you looked at some other extreme samples and figured it out the observation from there similarly you are rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true then you are making a type 1 error and you are rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually false then it is a uh, correct decision so it's it's mentioned incorrect over here but it's actually the correct decision so that's a mistake in the presentation Okay, I just corrected it that uh, particular value incorrect correct because that's what it means that when you are rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually false that means it is true you always have to reject to reject the null hypothesis when it is false. So what we basically say about this rejection or acceptance of null hypothesis well in general statistical language we never say that we are rejecting the null hypothesis what we usually say that we do not have enough evidence to accept the null hypothesis and that's why we are accepting the alternative hypothesis. So for example, if I look at a very uh, practical example of, of our judicial system, they, whenever they are making a decision, they always say that we are releasing the victim or we are releasing the uh, the one on which you have uh, you have put the charge on the person on which you have put the charge on is releasing because you do not have enough evidence that proves that the person is guilty well it is because that in actuality or in real situation then he the person might have done that crime but the evidence that uh, that the another party has produced has failed or insufficient to prove that claim so the hypothesis was that a person is victim or the person is criminal but you are not accepting it or you you have failed to prove it that the person is actually a victim so in that case you are not rejecting but you failed to prove the null hypothesis or you failed to prove the assumption that a person is criminal and that's why you are accepting the alternative hypothesis so that's a quick uh, way or a, a quick thing I wanted to tell you uh, that you never say that you reject the null hypothesis but you always say you do not have enough self evidence to accept the null hypothesis and that's why accepting the alternative hypothesis so let's move ahead and say uh, see about how do you do it well uh, in this case the assumption is that you are aware about the population mean for example uh, you are aware that if you are studying a four hours in a day you are going to get 80 percent mark or a grade uh, that is the information you already have um, from from your data and then you want to do a z test which is basically nothing but the x bar which is a sample mean minus mu which is population mean divided by standard error standard error is your sigma divided by under root n sigma is nothing but standard deviation and n is the number of values that you have in the sample so with the help of this formula you drive the z statistic and with the help of the critical region in which you will going to fall the z statistics value so if you are doing a two tail test that means what you are saying that uh, reading if you are reading more than four hours you will going to get the less mark or if you are reading less than four hours you are going to get the uh, less marks then basically it's a two-way hypothesis one way hypothesis is is basically saying that uh, if you are studying more than four hours you will always going to get the better marks same is the case with 
So here in this case we are saying less than value, here in this case we are saying if the value is greater than the hypothesis value. So that's the sign. Alternative hypothesis is greater than the null hypothesis and here in this case we are saying alternative hypothesis is greater than null hypothesis. And in this case it can be on another side. So we accept or reject the null hypothesis based on the confidence that we are setting up. That means we want to test the hypothesis at 95 degree confidence or 99 degree confidence or 90 degree confidence level. Based on that value, you get the rejection region. And generally in your textbooks or even if you look at uh, or surf the Z statistics values uh, on the internet, it produces a table which has the upper and lower values here in this case of uh, two-tailed test but in case of word tailed test, tailed test it generally has the either upper or down value by which you can place your exact test statistics so if it is coming somewhere in this area then you will going to accept the null hypothesis if it is falling over here which is grayed out area in a rejection region, then you are saying that you have, do not have enough evidence to accept the null hypothesis and that's why you are accepting the alternative hypothesis. Same is the case with this one here. In case of this right tailed, you will accept the null hypothesis if Z statistics value is falling somewhere down there based on the Z table that you will find in your textbooks or on internet and reject it if it is falling outside of this value. And here in this case, you have rejection region on both the side. So if a test uh, null hypothesis X is coming in this area, that means in acceptance region, then you will accept the null hypothesis or your assumption. If it is coming here in this rejection region, which is grayed out area, then you will say you are going to reject it. So that will going to require a little bit of work that we will do in our next videos about how to test it and how to accept or reject uh, the alternative hypothesis or null hypothesis and put it some some of this theory in action. So that's pretty much all I wanted to discuss in this video and I will meet you in the new video with a new topic.